All right. There's a lot of controversy uh, in the media right now about Joe Rogan and his use of the N word on um, throughout his 12 years of podcasting and and um, interviews and all of that, which which has been uh, copy cut and pasted into a mashup. Um, and you can find it online, though I. Uh, it's painful to watch, uh, to listen to and to watch. So there are a few things that I've been really wanting to say about this. Um, and because this is the Say It Out Loud podcast, I want to be completely honest with you. I really hesitate expressing my emotions and my opinions as it relates to racism in our country. Uh, someone who uh, you know, went to school for social work, worked with uh, marginalized communities in our society. I, I think I really felt it on a, on a very deep level, the pain of the people of our country that have been oppressed and marginalized for so long, specifically in this situation with Joe Rogan, I'm talking about black people in our country. And I hesitate talking about it because it just hurts even just to talk about it. Um, and then I really fear that I'm going to get super angry. And um, the thing that I used to get in trouble the most when I was a kid was for being very loud and animated. So what I'm working on throughout this podcast is, you know, not only in a way like, okay, breathing through the emotions as I talk about what I want to talk about in the next, you know, few 20, 30 minutes, um, and I'm also just really giving myself permission to speak from a very, very honest, unfiltered place, which is what I preach, which is what I teach, which is what I get paid to help other people with. So I'm going to do the same for myself. And I'm going to take that advice for myself. So um, I saw this mashup of Joe Rogan saying the N-word many times. I, I, I lost count. I, was it 54? I, I'm not even sure at this point. I stopped watching it, actually. And then I, um, I read an article by, um, I saw a post by Jamel Hill, who's a contributing writer at the Atlantic, but she basically said, you know, white people like should never under any circumstance say the N word. I'm going to, I'm Brown. I'm, I'm not white. I'm Brown. And I'm, I'm going to say if I, as a Brown person should, and will never say the N word. Okay. And I, I just, I love the, just how she said it is just like, boom, to the point. No, white people or anyone who asks, anyone. I want to open this up to not just be like, oh, for white people, for anyone who's ever wondered, wait, well, why can't I say the N word? Instead of, well, why can't I say the N word? What I think is a better question is, why would you want to? And then, and this is the dialogue I was having. It's like, well, it's my freedom of speech. You realize no one's stopping you from saying anything. If you want to go say the N word, go say the n-word you have the freedom to say the n-word but they're going to be consequences to pay depending on who you surround yourself with if you surround yourself with with other people who have no problem saying the n-word then of course you don't really have consequences to pay do we really think we're that trapped you know you can do whatever you want if you want to say the n-word you could say the n-word but a better question to ask is why would i want to use my voice and my freedom to speak. A better question to ask is, I have such a sacred instrument called my voice. Out of all the words in the English dictionary, why would I want to use a word that is rooted in hatred, that is rooted in cruelty? Do you know what I did the other day? Because I was, you know, I was gearing up to record this podcast. And I and I kept, I was, I was noodling on this question. Why would like, Hey, a better question to ask yourself is why would you want to use this word? And I stood in the kitchen and I said to myself, okay, say the word out loud, Vasavi, say the N word out loud. I could not get myself to say it out loud because I know too much. I know why that word was used. I know who it was used towards. I know the energy in which it was spoken. I knew the, the derogatory nature of the word. It adds zero value in my life to utter that word. What makes us human beings is our ability to discern 
is using this word going to add life more breathe more life into me or is it is it am i that filled with hatred myself that i have no problem using this word when i know that it was a word that was used to talk down to black people why would i use that word right it's just like you have the freedom and i realized oh i do have the freedom to say whatever I want for everyone out there who's saying my freedom is being ripped away. My freedom is being ripped away. You could say whatever the hell you want. You can say whatever you want and there are consequences. You're not going to be liked by everybody. And it's just, I imagine a toddler when I hear people saying, why can't I say the N word? I imagine a toddler being like, but I want that toy. Why can't I have it? You know, and it's like, no one's telling you what you can and can't do. I take that back. There is a lot of you can and can't do this. You can't say this word because then you're gonna be canceled. You can't talk about this because then you're gonna be canceled. But instead of being so afraid of being canceled, how about you ask yourself, how do I want to use my voice? How do I learn what matters the most to me? How do I go deeper into the core of who I am and express that through my words? Do I need the N word to be the truest expression of myself? Or is it just that you get mad that there are people out there who are saying, do not use this word? Because if you think about it, like I've said over and over, you are free to use whatever word you want. You are trapped because you are hearing an opposing point of view and that makes you feel insecure. That makes you feel shaky. If you believe so much in your freedom, then say what you want. Stop complaining that you can't say the word. Just say it then. Say it. Say it. But for the person listening to this who wants to have a deeper sense of self-knowledge, awareness, and be mindful and intentional with the words they use, then a better question to ask yourself, why would you want to ever use a word like that? When, when, when that voice, that, that word is pure hatred. There's nothing, there is nothing loving, kind, expansive, compassionate about that word. So when it comes to cancel culture, I've been having thoughts about Joe Rogan. Like I don't agree with canceling people. I think people do have the power to change. I think, I do believe people have the power to change. How I think today is very different than how I th- thought three years ago. I think about my, the codependent relationships that I was in. I think about my addiction, my recovery, how I used to think. I believe that people have the power to change. Do I believe Joe Rogan's apology? I want to. I want to believe, I want to believe Joe Rogan's apology. I want to believe that people can change and that you know, maybe this mashup of him using all the N words, he saw that and he was like, oh my God, what was I thinking? I can't believe, and not what was I thinking? Oh, I got caught, but what was I thinking? I, I can, it feels painful to watch, you know, I know have enough awareness to know that I shouldn't be like that word is just so, it's just filled with such hatred. There's nothing positive. You would never say that word out of love. That was never used as a, as a, as a way of expressing love. So I saw his apology and I was like, I want to believe you. I do. I I believe in the good of others. That doesn't mean that I would be shocked if this happened again. This is yet another thing he's having to apologize for. You know, I want to believe though that people can change. Because if, if, if we don't believe in the ability and the power within us to change, we won't change, right? We're always waiting for things outside of us to then have us grow and evolve. And we actually do have the power to change. So I hope he's, I hope he's being genuine. I want to believe that he is. And I think that canceling, when we cancel people, what we're doing is canceling parts of ourselves. If we don't like, oh, I'm this way. I don't like what you have to say. And because what you have to say threatens my worldview, I'm going to cancel you. But guess what? When you cancel another person, first of all, there's no room for conversation. There's no room for growth at all. There's no room for self-reflection because you've already, you've killed off, you've killed them off. You've killed off this character that, that is them, but you've killed off a part of yourself because if we are truly mirrors of one another and we are truly all one as a collective, then that part of somebody that you don't like exists within you. And they are just a mirror for what you haven't really looked at within yourself. So that's why I think when we, when we just keep talking about 
oh, this person did this, or we're constantly in fear of being canceled. We stunt our creativity. We stunt our truth. We're so afraid of being canceled that we, it's almost like, ooh, what can I say and get away with without being canceled? Then this naughty side to us comes out. So we just learn how to become better mask wearers of our personality. Every time someone, if someone is threatened, let's just look at like in childhood, cancel culture for me is that, is that, that is, that's what I think of. If you don't do this, if you don't behave the way that I want you to behave, I'm not going to love you anymore. I'm not going to accept you. I'm going to shame you. That's what cancel culture is. I don't like what you have to say. I, you're done. I think everyone has consequences to pay for their behavior. And if being canceled is the consequence and is there a better way to hold people accountable? How does one, is the goal to get rid of this person and say you're canceled, you're muted, or do we give a shit enough about the person to be like, how do we hold you? How do we have you rise to a level of standard that is kind and humane and decent? So I realized this this weekend. So I don't think canceling is a, is a, I, I, I think it's a misuse of energy. And, and I'm not saying we have to be the emotional rehab centers at all for people in our life that say things or do things that are just highly inappropriate um, and lack class and character. I am saying though, when we engage in canceling, we are cutting off a part of ourselves. Joe Rogan has a huge responsibility to clean up his mess. So we'll see moving forward, right? Like how often you use the N-word if you keep using it, what are you doing to, you know? And we have to remember that Joe Rogan is marketing to the working class, white working class men, right? I don't expect any different. I really don't. So let's not be surprised. You got to look at the source here. I was watching the R. Kelly documentary and I noticed myself feeling bad for him in the first two episodes. I said, oh, but he's been through sexual abuse. Oh, he's, he's been tormented when he was a kid. I understand why he did what he did to those girls. And um, I started thinking about how many excuses I've made in my life for myself and for people in my life who have abused me in some shape or form, how many excuses I've made. Oh, they were just having a bad day or it's my fault. Or maybe I'm just being annoying. Maybe if I just do this, maybe if I just do this, they won't you know, be that way. How do I need to be in order to get your love, you know, to get your love. And then by the end of the documentary, there was just too much, right? Like videos, footage, audio recordings, all this stuff of like stuff that he had done with these young girls. And I just, I, I, I couldn't make any more excuses for him. I said, I know you've got, you're in pain, dude. I was like talking out loud to my TV. I'm like, I know you're in pain, but, um, yeah, you, you've heard a lot of people. I, I felt no empathy for him at that point. And that's a weird place for me to be because I feel very deeply for the abusers um, because I can put myself there. I can put myself in a place that I can, I can Im imagine what it would be like for someone to be so hurt that they would hurt another human being. But one thing I have failed to do in my life, and I think as a society in general, we often do this, is that we don't acknowledge how much pain we are in. So when it came to the R. Kelly, I was, I, I started the documentary, I started thinking about scenarios in my life where I felt really, really powerless. I felt really, really powerless. Um, I thought about the first blowjob I ever gave. The first blowjob I ever gave, I was 17 years old. I was going to the Christmas choir concert. I sang in, in choir. I got picked up by this guy that had shown me some attention and I loved how much attention I was getting. And I ma it made me feel very worthy of, like I felt seen. And he said, I'll pick you up for your choir concert. And so he picked me up for my choir concert and I thought he really liked me because it's like, oh, a guy's picking me up. I lied to my mother. I said a friend was picking me up and uh, I lied. I've gotten to his car and we're driving to where I think is the school. 
and we're going to my choir concert and he pulls off on exit 22. And I felt something. The minute he did that, I said, something's not right. And I said, why are we pulled off here? And he pulled over on the side of the street in this neighborhood and parked. And he goes, what, you're not going to suck my dick? And I said, what? I go, I've never done that before. He goes, well, I'm taking you to your concert. Basically, I said, and what? And I said, what if I don't? He goes, walk to your school. Find a way to get to your concert, which was very far away. <laughs> like I went to a private school. So it was, you know. So he got in the back seat of his car and I got in the back seat of his car and I was like, shit, I'm stranded. I didn't have a phone. And I got in the back seat and I said to him, just don't come in my mouth. And he had on leopard underwear. <laughs> and I'm so I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just know it doesn't feel good. It doesn't smell good. It's just, mm -mm. and then I, I had never experienced a man having an orgasm. And so he came and he like, didn't give a shit that I said, don't come in my mouth. It got in my hair. It was on my face. It was definitely in my hair. <laughs> like something about Mary, that movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Um, he ended up driving me to my choir concert and my shirt was all unbuttoned. And I remember I walked in my, my concert, my choir team, my, 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 the rest of my choir was in the back. We were ready to get on stage. And I, went in proudly and I, and I bragged, I just gave my first blow job. And I really thought that was like a sign of like, I'm worth something. Look, I, this man wants me. I gave him a blow job. I must be so now I'm something because a man wants me, you know, that started from a really young age. And I think because I needed that, I made excuses for a lot of what I went through with men from college onwards. I mean, from high school onwards and even before that, right? Like not feeling accepted in the fourth grade and sitting on the bus, Kevin Gissentanner was standing, sitting next to me. And he, we were sitting, you know, in those school buses and he had the seat and he goes, you're as flat as this seat. And in that moment I was like, oh, well, I guess if I'm flat, then I must not be like girly enough or I must not mean I'm cute or hot or guys won't like me. All of this to say is we, you know, going back into cancel culture and everything like full circle is just, I always want to bring it back to the individual, the individual, the parts of ourselves that we cancel, we cancel in others. It does not take away from the wrongdoings of other people. I want to make that very clear. It does not take away for people having to be accountable for what they've done or said. What we see out in the media, what's happening in the world is a reflection of what's going on within us. It is an opportunity to reflect on who we are, period. That is why I think the question, why can't I say the N-word, is the dumbest question ever. It is the most unintelligent question ever. Why can't I say the N-word? You can say the N-word. You can say it as loud as you want. But my question to you is, why would you want to? Why would you want to use the freedom of your voice? Why would you want to even use your voice to utter that word when you damn well know the weight of that word, the hatred of that word, the weight, the hate, the pain of that word? Why would you want to use your freedom in that way? That's it. That's all I got for today. It's just, just asking ourselves better questions. Not why can't I ask yourself a better question? Why would I? Why would I want that? Not why can't I? Why would you want to say that? What's a better way? How about what's a better way for you to use my voice than to proudly say or with so much freedom say the N-word? What's a better way for me to use my voice? That's all I got today. Thank you so much. I'll catch you next time on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast.